we don't have enough paper.
question we have for him is just whether you will provide the slides to us that we're trying to take these notes on. Can we get those slides from you after? Oh, is it there? Okay. Yes. I was trying to help with the minutes, so I wasn't doing a very good job. <laughs> oh, okay. We will put these as a PDF, as a slide, PDF slide on the website so that you can download it and look at it if you want to. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions about the borrower? Apparently not. The operating budget. This is the meat of the thing. This, this is the operating budget right here, which we passed out. And we have on the website, so you can see it. You can download it if you want to. It's essentially the same as we saw before, except I updated the year-to-date expenditures to the end of the year. It's the only thing that's different. Any questions?
Tom Coons, uh, 413 Stockdale. I have a question regarding the legal buying. Um, yes. There are two different sections on this. I'm looking at the sewer section, and the proposed legal line, if I'm reading this correctly, is $25,000. Nope. Okay, I'm sorry. Then am I, am I reading? Look at line, line nine. Look at line nine on the water side. Ten thousand. Okay. And line. And there's ten on nine one. on the other. One. Two thousand dollars in each category. Okay. Can you explain to me what the um, purpose of having that much or legal for both would be? We anticipate some legal issues. We can't explain more than that. Would those legal issues be personnel issues? I can't talk about it. Personnel is confidential, if it were. So you're saying that it is personnel? No, I'm not. <laughs> Historically, how much have we paid in legal fees a year for the Water and Sewer Commission? How far back? Three, four years? I'm asking how much a year would we pay? Um, it would vary anywhere from $500 to several thousand. I don't have the final details of that. So you're, you're asking the, the town to pony up $20,000 for legal fees, for, right. for legal costs. Yes. But you, you can't explain what those, those legal costs would be. No, I can't. Is there a reason why you can't explain why those why that money is necessary? The relationship and discussions between the commissioners and the attorney are confidential. Okay, but that but I'm not asking you what the what the conversations are. I'm asking you if there is a reason why we have a combined twenty thousand dollars in in legal and anticipated legal costs over the, over the coming year when we've averaged somewhere between, as you said, 500 up to a few thousand. It, it seems excessive, and I think we all as ratepayers have a, have a right to know why we would be, why you would need that much money. Is there something that we need to know about why you would require that much in legal fees? On advice of counsel, I can't talk about it. How many people do you have employed by the sewer, water and sewer commission? Full time or part time? Both. One, two, full time, one, two, three, four, part time? I believe. So, if, um, based on your answer, I'm assuming that on the advice of counsel, you can't tell us, but. I'm assuming that these have to do with personnel issues. No, you can't assume that. They have to do with legal issues. And I can't go any further than that. What would be the reason why you couldn't tell us what our rates are, are what we're being asked to put 20, almost 20 plus thousand dollars? I can't talk about it. It is confidential. It is a relationship between the commissioners and the attorney. He's not asking us to put that in. Well, I would hope he wouldn't be. Right. So, is there any reason why the town should should authorize that amount of money? Um, the district only has bottom line authority in each department. You can't cut legal. Just like you can't cut chemicals, you can't cut electricity, you can cut it. The operational expense for sewer, you can cut the operational expense for water, you can, <coughs> but you can't cut individual line items. If, if you weren't a commissioner and you read this budget and you read this line and you got the answer that I just got, would you not be concerned that there is something... I mean, I guess the question is, are, is the district in some sort of legal Jeopardy, is there some liability that's going against the district? There is what is called a contingent liability. Can you explain what that means? A contingent liability is we're not being sued. Right. 
but there's always a possibility it could happen. And therefore, we have to prepare the defense. But are you anticipating that you're going to be sued? No. We are preparing. Anybody can be sued. Yeah. Okay. Anybody. You can be sued. I can be sued. Right. And you have to have money available to defend yourself. Even though you are found to be in the right, okay. you still have to defend yourself. Right. But my, my question is, it sounds as though you anticipate that we're, we're, we're going to be sued or there's a chance, a very good chance, that this in this coming budget year that we're going to be sued, which would require this much in a way of, of legal defense costs. I, I, I guess say, it's a yes or no. Do you, are we you have to budget something? based on reasonable expectations. That's all we can do. I mean, I don't know how much we're going to spend on chemicals. I don't know how much we're going to spend on electricity. But we do the best we can to project into the future. How much did we pay last year in 2019 for for legal fees in both the uh, water and sewer individually? Legal, we paid 11626 for wastewater, and it's right here in the budget. Okay, so what were those costs regarding? Those were regarding legal matters. Okay, but what kind I of... I can't legal? talk about it. I will not talk about it. Are they regarding, you know, was there something with like, getting zoning issues, or... I can't talk about it. It's confidential. Which means it's personnel. No. It may be regulatory, it may be property issues, it may be liability issues. But if that's true, okay, I'm just, humor me. If that's true, because this, you know, this impacts our, our rates. You're asking for this amount of money. Clearly there's something happening. So my question is, no, might have happened. Happened. Might have happened. Okay, so last year, how much of this had to do with uh, I can't tell you. Contract reviews. Okay, contract reviews. You can't tell us if any of these things no. have to do with that? Nope. So let me ask you this, point blank, yes or no. Any of these fees, any of these costs from last year, last year, yes. were any of those costs related to personnel issues? I can't tell you. That would give you details that are shielded. I'm not asking for details. It's a yes or no question. I can't tell you. I cannot tell you. So any of the legal costs that this town, that this district pays, we have no right as ratepayers. That's a yes or no question. Right? <coughs> no right to know what those those costs are. So you can just put whatever amount you want, and just you don't have to give us any explanation. <coughs> Is that correct? We cannot give you details just like the school cannot give you details about its legal costs and the town cannot give you details about its legal costs. They cannot. That's funny. I, I believe that we, we do at the school. We provide <coughs> details of exactly what those legal costs are regarding. No, you don't. You may get a summary bill that says, oh, for the but if, if, Excuse me, but if somebody, <coughs> if somebody came to it, a taxpayer came to our meeting and said, I'd like to know what, a, what we're paying all these legal costs for. Like, for example, you might be aware we had the recent um, withdrawal <coughs> from uh, S SAU 56. That was, that was clearly known to everybody, right? What is common knowledge is not necessary, or rumor is not necessarily public information. RSA 91A makes it very clear that the relationship between elected officials and their attorney is confidential. I just think this is really um, this is concerning. I mean, you're asking for the same amount of money for next year. Clearly, we would expend it that amount. We have no idea what it was for. We do. Well, but we can't talk about it. That's obvious. <coughs> All right. Thank you. I have a related question. 
Have the ratepayers had an opportunity to um, be at a meeting where the lawyer was present? Where, where the what was present? The attorney. He was present. He yes. was. So, or, and none of these questions came up? Or, I, I'm just, the, you know, in our decision making, it sounds like there's some, some serious concern about putting this amount of money in the legal line. Um, so I'm just trying to get an understanding of whether the ratepayers had opportunities to have these questions answered in the past or, or not. They asked the questions and our attorney said, I can't tell you. And that's on video. I was just wondering when you were talking about potentially looking into the rate structure um, and altering that based on consumption, would you be also looking at the sewer rates too, related to the, one. the sewer wastewater oh, yes. rates? Oh yes, they're both going to be part of it. Okay. It seems somewhat unfair if someone has to pay for 30,000 gallons of water that they pay a flat rate for sewer. Well, if you're putting 30,000 gallons down the sewer, you should pay more than the person who uses 8,000 gallons in a quarter. It's just simple equity. And um, are you having, would you be having any outside people help to look at the rate structures and do that analysis, or is that no. be done by the commissioners? No, that'll be done by the commissioners. Okay, and that is that based on multiple years of data, or... Um, just one year, or how much data would you be using to kind of try to set projections? We're going to use two years of functional data, but as we discovered, some of the older data was somewhat incomplete, so we're coming down to, we're going to use fourth quarter 2018 and third quarter 2019 data, because that seems to be more solid. Fourth quarter 2018 through third quarter 2019, so just Correct. one full year? One full year. And you're ba you would be changing the rates based on just one year? We looked back and compared it roughly to prior years, and it seems to be consistent relatively. But we've got some more solid data in that time span. Okay. Robert Cavanaugh, 13 Woodland Drive. Um, last year and this year, have we been paying to use these halls? Have we? Sometimes. How much have we paid in total? The rent this one tonight was $450. Why aren't we at the school for free? Because the school isn't always free or available. Do By the other way, town facilities this facility that we can use that are free instead of paying $450 to have this many people here, we could have done it in the gymnasium for free. <coughs> Maybe. It depends on the schedule of the school. Have you checked? No. Okay, Besides, so then you don't know. And how much did we spend last year on rentals for the hall? Um, so what category? They were, they were privately covered, partially. By who? By me. Were you reimbursed for that? No. Okay, what's the total that we did pay? Uh, we're thinking about three hundred dollars. And where does but that that's fall in the next door? Where does that fall in on the budget? What category? Uh, administrative cost. Okay. There now is I, an annual meeting one that aggregates into administrative cost. All right, and all that's in the record to all the receipts for all the spending on the halls. Oh yes. Okay. Well, the ones where the district paid for it, the ones I paid for it, no. How much did you pay? I told you three hundred dollars or so. So each time we go there, you're paying three hundred dollars out of your pocket. No, each time we go over there, I paid fifty dollars. Okay. And you don't get reimbursed for that. No. Okay. See, I'm a member of the Legion, so it's more of a personal thing. Angela Matthews, four thirty-seven Locust Street. I'd like to circle back to the. Um, discussion of going by, uh, 
I'm, I'm trying to go ahead. Okay, okay great. I'm paying so, very close attention to you. Thank you. Are you um, planning for hearings? When you mentioned changing the rate structure, yes. are you planning for public hearings and public input? Have you thought about how many hearings this might take and how long a period of time? Are you looking at making this change in 2020, making this change in 2021? When, what is your expectation around when you will implement a plan and how you will accept public input to that plan? Just so we're clear, the commissioners have the right to set the rate without public input. But we will, we will have a public hearing, informational hearing. It may well be within your right. I don't know the law about that. I but don't. there are how many customers in this, uh, in this district? 600, 500? Uh, it's That's a very just... small number of people, so it it seems as if we ought to be a little bit more engaged than the commissioners make that decision, and as if our input ought to be a matter and be important to the commissioners to take that input in your decision-making process. And we are. I heard Prior you commissioners wrong. did not have public hearings. Did not. We will. The last rate increase did not have a public hearing. It was just announced. The rate increase is a different matter than the rate structure and the way you'll be charging for those uh, units versus consumption. That's a very different matter. So I just want to be clear about rates being set for over budget versus, oh, we're changing the way we computate, we compute all of these things. So just making a point, you don't need to respond to that, but I just see those as two very different matters. does end up passing by the ratepayers um, at the annual meeting, when would the schedule be for changes to the uh, rates, the increases, the indoor, the structure? I know you said you'd have a public hearing, but I know there's a billing that's going to happen very soon after the annual meeting. Um, would that one be reflecting changes, or... Question. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. The annual meeting approves this budget. Mm -hmm. Totally separate budget subject is rate structure. Totally right. separate. Not voted on, mm -hmm. but we will have public hearings. Right. I'm just trying to get a sense as a rate payer if this budget is approved on March 17th when I get my bill that goes through the first quarter of this year, um, you know, just a few weeks later, will I see? A different bill than I have been seeing. Um, will you stick that public hearing in like right after this? I'm just wondering about a timing. I think we already said we're having a public hearing on the 26th of February. Oh, okay, just in two weeks from yeah. today. Okay, I didn't understand that you meant that. Thank you. Um, line 10 <coughs> on the sewer. Water or sewer? Water or sewer? Sewer. Says other, including HTA fire protection inspection. In 2019, we spent 300. Um, well, I, maybe that was what was budgeted, but spent year to date as of 1231 was 4,195 dollars, and you are budgeting 25 thousand dollars. What is that about? Remember in Article 2, we talked about engineering costs. In Article 2, there's $33,000 for engineering costs. <coughs> All right. The long term thing. Well, there's other things that need engineering evaluation as well, besides the long term capital items. So, how did you arrive at a round number like $25,000. What exactly is that going to? 
if you look at the numbers, there's like uh, the EPA TMDL study is four thousand dollars. It might come in at forty-one hundred. So we pick round numbers. How much for trash removal? Twelve hundred. Well, we spent thirteen forty-seven. So we pick round numbers. We it's the best guess estimate we have. So how did you arrive at twenty-five thousand dollars for this particular line? Because there are a number of things that we want to see evaluated and engineered for asset management. Like what? Water lines, um, wastewater systems, and equipment, infrastructure. So do you have a breakdown of the different things that you're going to be looking at to justify this number? I don't, but Clem is our infrastructure specialist, asset management specialist. Mm -hmm. It's really just a best guess. That's all you can do with a budget. Can you turn on a look at the estimate was given to do a drawing, a full blown drawing for the okay. Clem? Clem, use the microphone. This is God speaking. Yes, Lord. The uh, pump galley we asked the cost for drawing from the engineering group. This was a twenty thousand dollars for the pump galley. So we're guessing what we have to do for the next project. But we're looking down the line. It has to be done two years down the road. Right. We'll have to do the engineering ahead of time. We can put the effort to planning what was done at the pump galley. So we know which direction we're going. Right. Get the firm grip on it ahead of time. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. That's yeah. what, nothing more. Uh, uh, let me repeat this again. I'm sorry, I uh, don't like mics. But uh, we asked for an engineering proposal for the pump gallery to get a full size drawing, a complete drawing of the whole town. That was close to $20,000 in itself. We're looking at some projects that. Like this. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> We're looking at uh, some projects we want to do on the treatment plant. And we need to get an engineer down there to do some drawings for us. We want to get a proposal. We want to get a proposal. Jesus, Mary Joseph. Excuse me. But it's just a wrong guess, like you said before. We don't know exactly what it's going to cost us. Because we haven't really talked to them as such. We're looking into it. If it costs us a little bit more, we'll next year like, come up with the rest of it, hopefully. But hopefully this will cover what we want to do. But it's just a step in the right direction to get something going that has to be done. What does the HTA stand for? Oil Tanner Associates. Engineering Company. <clears throat> so I feel like um, these questions are highlighting something that the Budget Committee has uh, communicated to you every time we've seen this budget, which is we'd really like more of a breakdown so that we can get a better understanding of where these numbers come from. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of disappointed to see the same budget we saw last time because I thought we made it pretty clear in our last meeting that we really needed some more concrete information um, to, to see what's behind these numbers. Um, and I think we're hearing some of that expressed from the ratepayers as well tonight. Caroline Kendall, 20 Silver Lane. I'm wondering for some of us who came late if there are more handouts. I did see one handout of the budget and what I saw um, did not include the administrative crop share breakdown, and so I'm wondering if there is one that specifically speaks to that.
Caroline Kendall again. So thank you for the handouts, but it doesn't um, seem to address prop share administrative under water and under, I would assume it's under sewer as well, but um, is there a breakdown for what comprises the administrative prop share? Not on that sheet, but this is the level of detail that we have. Unfortunately, one of the problems we had as we started developing this budget was a lot of things were miscategorized. We were fixing them bit by bit. So we had to go with what was available to us at the time. This is John Ordway, the chair of the budget committee. I think in our last discussion, our last meeting, we specifically asked that you explain those changes in the budget at the hearing so that everybody understood when they're looking year to year the changes that they could understand. If you can you walk through that for us here? This is the budget format that was used by the Water and Sewer District without objection and without difficulty for at least 10 years that I know of. Nobody's ever asked for this level of detail before. What I'm saying now, though, Mr. Ernest, you mentioned that you moved categories around so that some charges were in different line items now, and because yes. you're correcting for past... We're trying to show a budget that compares apples to apples, so the changes that are taking place have to come after this budget is submitted. They're aggregated into the total but, you know, there are some things that were administrative that belonged in payroll, and we fixed that, but it's after the first of the year. So if you're looking year to year, we can see discrepancies based on just moving line items. You'll see differences. You won't see discrepancies. Right, it would look like a discrepancy, but it's actually just a move from one line item to another. Correct. And so what we ask for is that you just walk through where those changes are so that when people look year to year of the changes, you can explain that. But are you, are you prepared to do that? Or? I, I can do it because most of that occurred after January 1st. This is historical data. I can't go back. The audit is underway. I can't make any major changes. So, um, Angela Van Hughes, 437 Locus. Just for clarification, the budget that was handed out at last year's annual meeting had a, a listing separate from, um, and I don't have that, those three pages with me. They were two pages, one for water, one for sewer, and then one additional page that had a whole bunch of administrative expenses on it, as I recall. And I think we could track back to that. And what happened was that that, act, that budget was actually reduced by 15,000. And then in the next, another motion to reduce the sewer budget by 50,000. There was a motion that failed to reduce water by 50,000 as well. But that 15,000 was specifically for a list of items that were the administrative budget. I don't have it in front of me, nor my apologize, uh, for and I apologize, um, because uh, I didn't bring it with me and I should have, but that was a separate list of line items that was then, it then was prorated into each of the other two pages, um, and proportionately, as you've done here. So I, and I do recall that. I, I was there, I don't recall that. We just differ in our recollections. Okay. On the, uh, the water um, part of this, line 10, you have uh, right Pierce Engineering. Um, looks like spent here to date. Oh. First thing is the budget for, for 2019 was, or the budget amount, I'm assuming, was 13370 Spent was $22,030. And you have another $25,000 budgeted for this. So, can you explain what happened that we went so far over what appears, what, what appears to have been budgeted 
and what the 25,000 is for. As with sewer, these are estimate, 25,000 for the future is our best guess estimate of what engineering we're going to have to do proactively into the future. Now we may not have to spend it, but I suspect we will. I hope we will spend it. The 22,000, let me explain that. The district signed an agreement to have an asset management program installed. And there were certain tasks that had to be performed in order to get the money back from the state. Okay? And it bridged 2018 to 2019. So we were still paying invoices to Wright Pierce, even though it started in 2018. So part of that was payments to Wright Pierce to finish the asset management program. any of those expenses from last year have been allocated towards or indicated as a 2018 expense? No, we didn't know about them. They, they were not billed, they were not invoiced until 2019. You can't accrue an expense until you know it exists. I just, um, I'd like to make a, a comment. Um, Emily and I were both involved in the school board, and, and one of the things that we heard from the budget committee over the years is the need for detail. And I think we have done an incredible job at making sure that all the folks at the budget committee have a, a full report of exactly what we paid, um, what we anticipate are going to be our ongoing costs, both contractual and non-contractual. But what's lacking here is just any detail whatsoever. I mean, to put down a, a certain amount, like you have contingency listed here on the, uh, the sewer section, it just says contingency 4,000. We paid nothing last year under that, whatever. Like, there's just no explanation for this stuff. And I think that all the rest of the boards in town do a, a good job at trying to break this stuff down so anybody who comes to a meeting like this would, would understand. I mean, trust the, the budget committee. Um, I can't imagine that some of these questions aren't being raised by them as well. They may not have said it, but I, I just don't understand why this is, this is okay. This really doesn't make much sense to me. Hi, Mary Robinson from Willie Street. Um, you had touched on you're going to change the structure um, and base it on consumption. We are proposing. Okay. I guess my concern would be. As it stands right now, you know what you're going to be getting potentially every month because everyone's paying essentially the same amount. When you go to consumption-based, there's more variability in what will you'll be bringing in each month. So how will you make sure that you're going to be meeting what you need for the budget? Will you be bringing in the same revenue when you're changing to consumption-based? In aggregate, yes. Some people will pay less, some people will pay more, but on, on the whole, it will come to the same amount. And you're basing that on like a year and a half of the, data? The distributive law of math, actually. If we have one house in town, one house, and only one house, that person paid on a consumption basis would pay for the cost to get their services to that house. Well, we have it spread over like 560 houses. Guess, so it works the same way. Can I clarify but something? My concern is that there's not a lot of people that are drawing from the bonds for water sewer department. You've got to give them like, I can care. I'll hold on for a second because I think we're talking about something that's proposed for next year, which isn't really related to the budget that we're 
Unless I, I don't mean oh, okay. to cut it off. But, but those are good questions, probably for your annual meeting. Um, okay. But but really, we're focusing on the budget that's been proposed. So any questions that are related to that, please focus in on that. Capital Reserve Fund Sewer. It's like a SIP, Capital Improvement Plan. It's money put aside for future plans. We may not have a specific plan in mind, but this one is for sewer for $25,000. It's sort of like a bank account against future things so we don't have to always borrow. Bear in mind, we had a presentation about the debt limit for the district. It's pretty thin. We borrowed this 200000 We've hardly got anything left to borrow with. So we need to start putting money in the bank in a savings account. Now, Daigle, our lawyer wrote this. This particular phrase, to name the commissioners as agents to expend, I think that needs to be stricken. It should be authorized only by the annual meeting. Otherwise, commissioners can go in there and say, what the heck? Let's, let's buy something and say it's a sewer improvement. I would like to, I'm going to strike that, I'm going to recommend we strike that phrase. And I see Denise nodding, going, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And there's a reason. <coughs> Okay, it's a relatively straightforward thing. What's the language that you recommend? What's the language that you recommend? That's the language with a part that's in blue stricken. What What would be the language that you recommend? It would be to see if the village district will vote to establish a sewer capital reserve fund under the provisions of RSA 35 colon 1 for the repair, improvement, or replacement of sewer infrastructure and to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be placed in this fund, majority vote required. Okay. And that can be put forward as a, as a recommended amendment. That's how, that's how the budget committee can recommend it. Caroline Kendall, 20 Silver Lane. A few months ago, the Water and Sewer District Commissioners created a Sewer Capital Reserve Fund <coughs> and Water no. Capital Reserve Fund. Could you explain the difference from what you took in that? The action you that was a in? fund balance capital reserve, different from this. Could you explain the difference in the goals of how, you know, the purpose of those different funds and how they would be used differently? This one works like the SIP. You know what the SIP is, the Capital Improvement Plan. The fund balance one is for targeted repairs, maintenance, upkeep, <coughs> engineering fees of an ongoing basis. For instance, we, we're getting engineering drawings for the pump galley. That will come out of the fund balance capital reserve. These have to, we can authorize that to be expended, or we can add to it, but we're not. This requires a vote of the district. 
if we strike that phrase. Yes? What can I talk about now? Um, like, why are you not calling it a CIP fund versus a capital reserve fund? Because it would be confusing to people to know that they're the same thing. Well, a SIP actually is a capital reserve account. Or a capital improvement. Pardon? Or a capital improvement fund. Yeah. Well, that's just another phrase for that. This so is the legal term that the lawyer with says capital. it is. We should stay consistent with what the town and everyone else is using, is my opinion. Piggybacking on what on Denise's comment, I, I think that capital reserve fund sewer is very vague, and I'm wondering if you consulted with Michelle Clark about, um, you know, this is enabling legislation, and so people will look back at this Warren article 10 years from now to determine whether a purchase is authorized to be funded through this account or not, and the language as it's written is, you know, the town's capital improvement capital reserve fund has a supporting document which explains the kinds of projects which would happen um, through those funding through that funding source, and I think that would be really helpful. I, I do see you have repair or improvement, replacement of sewer infrastructure. Um, that's something, but I, I think it would be really helpful to have some kind of supporting documentation about what kinds of things and what the dollar threshold of qualifying projects might be. The SIP, the SIP, you can blow away an entire section of it and use it for something else if necessity arose. That SIP plan is just a guiding document. It is not cast in stone. It is just money set aside for capital improvement or capital reserve. That's all it is. We, we promise we'll use it for that purpose or to buy a fire truck, or an articulating plow, or whatever. But we don't have to. And I give you an example of the boiler in the town hall. Supposedly you were going to buy one. Well, you discovered you didn't need it, so you moved it to something else. No, it's still on CIT. Huh? It's still on our CIT plan. But five it's years from now, not now. It's deferred. It, it, it didn't go to something else. Right. Uh, real concerns about this because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, but on any of the reserve funds that we have, we have to have the approval of the town to actually use them. That's what you said. I don't, am I reading that into this particular? That's no, that, if you read 35.1, it says it requires a vote of the district, not the commissioners. The commissioners can't spend okay, this I money. I just want to make sure that was clear that I was Right. Is it 35-1? And the other thing is, if you have this kind of, are, are you not, in the, in the projects that you anticipate that are coming up, and some of the repairs, I'm sure, <coughs> from review of, you know, the various systems, the experts you have coming in, are you not putting enough into the operating budget for those anticipated problems? Well, Let's see, somebody was concerned about $25,000 in engineering. That may be part of it. So um, I'm appreciating that concern about earmarking more specifically what these funds are to be used for, because I've sat here through conversations about how the fund development funds can be used or not used. So not to create more work, I'm really not trying to frustrate or create more work for you, but I, I am understanding the conversations that happen and the things that stand in the way of sometimes releasing those funds for important purposes. So um, maybe a little bit greater clarity about what those improvements are would help. It's a savings account against the unknown is really what it is. You know, a lightning strike, no, it can't be a lightning strike, it has to be, I don't know, something breaks severely, we, didn't even anticipate it, we didn't know it was coming, and lack of But we've at least had some money set aside. It's called prudent government. Any other questions on Article 4? Article 5. 
Article 5 is the same thing except it's restricted to water. And I would recommend also we strike to name the commissioners as agents to expand. It's the same? Same thing. Putting money aside for unforeseen future or a big project that we don't know about yet. I have a, a just a general question about how you arrived at that amount. And I'm just curious if we actually think that's enough. Because it seems to me that any project you have is going to be enormous. Any repair that you're going to require is enormous. So, is, I mean, how did you arrive at 25,000? What, what exactly, you know? We looked at the bottom line effect on rates as they stand now and said, going much further than this is going to be met with a lot of unhappiness. Yes, but this is a separate warrant. What? This in itself is, this is separate, isn't it? I'm still going to get it. This is, it's going to be voted individually, isn't it? Yes. So There's separate art. So folks would have that opportunity to to review that and figure out whether or not they, they thought that was reasonable. They right. can increase it, they right. can decrease it. I'm just saying that based on, you know, what you're, you're anticipating a ton of other increases in here, yet this is for the unforeseen. I, I you know, for, as you said, it's a bank account. So how did you arrive at that, that dollar figure? That's all I wanted to know. We looked at the bottom line and said, what is the impact on the rate? Okay. Prudence says you should put money aside for the unforeseen future events. You just don't know where they're going to be. You know, the tree could fall through your roof tonight. Your insurance may cover part of it, but you've got a deductible. You just don't know. So Prudence says, put some money aside. So I was asking uh, permission to ask a question about Article 1 and circle back to it, but we may not be able to do that at this moment because we may it's not be finished on it. Hmm? It's a non-monetary non article, not within the purview of the Budget Committee. I'm not a Budget Committee member at this point. I'm standing up as a member of the district to ask the question about, about the budget. how that will occur and whether you John, will add language. John, I'm asking you to call order. That's a question you can ask at the annual meeting. Any other questions on? Carolyn Kendall, I apologize. I was late and I missed the discussion about Article Two, the bonds and notes. My, my comment is that um, you have $200,000 for Willie Street, you have two, or $200,000 for the total and one hundred and twenty of it is for Willie Street and then you have a number of smaller expenses that you are bonding along with that and I support the idea of those projects. Um, I'm, my, my bigger concern is what you had um, mentioned before about the overall debt limit for the district. And so when you know that you have expenses coming, um, why has the district not already raised the rates to handle some of these things? Um, but also, I, I'm concerned about, while well, Willie Street needs to happen, and I believe everything you've listed in that article likely needs to happen, um, we have new EPA regulations about nitrogen, which is which are extraordinarily restrictive, which no doubt will result in you know renovations to the water treatment plant, which is not new anyway, aside from the nitrogen regulations. And so um, I, I don't have an answer for that. I just want it publicly known that I believe the district is going to be facing um, 
mandated upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant um, sooner rather than later. And this is probably going to max out our debt limit, which is problematic. Um, so I would just, you know, while it's minor, my only recommendation is to raise rates sooner rather than later and try to accomplish whatever small things you can and, and keep them out of debt to maintain more flexibility when the time comes. Dennis St. Alain, Water Street. Uh, was she talking about nitrogen? That's sore, isn't it? Yes. Okay. I just to but storm water also has a nitrogen, nitrogen impact. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments about Article 5? Okay, I think that's all of the articles that have a monetary component to them. And so the hearing for that is closed. And we'll open a, a budget committee meeting to further discuss and uh, potentially recommend each of the articles. And it's an open public meeting, so you're all welcome to that. So let's end. So there's a motion from Emily Leach to uh, recommend Article 2 uh, as written. Is there a second? Second from Charlie. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion on Article 2.
whatever it's going to take to revamp their accounting, we expect to see a much different presentation next year. At least that was my take. question, which is that the um, estimated average um, rates at the bottom of the total budget line, do they reflect the 25000 for each um, of those two board articles for the capital reserve? They do. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, thank you. Um, just to come back to the point that I was making, jumping ahead. Uh, in the agenda, that <coughs> we've heard repeated concerns about the legal expenses in this budget. And while we have no control over anything but the bottom line, I do support the budget. And it is very close to what the budget would have been last year. But that same budget was $2,000 in legal fees, not 20000 So, as everyone expressed their concerns, I think what perhaps they were speaking to is how that sort of spending impacts running our district in a way that um, maximizes the resources that we need to take care of our water and our discharge into the um, watershed. So I just want to be sure that while I'm going to support this budget because I think a lot of work has been put into this to bring it back to where it needs to be, I am uh, equally concerned with the concerns expressed tonight around um, the, the ways in which some of the money is spent in, in this budget. But we don't have any control over that, and I do support the budget, and not particular line items in it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 3? Are we okay with a voice vote here? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, the motion passes and we recommend the Article 3 operating budget. Article 4. The city of the village district will vote to establish a sewer capital reserve fund under the provisions of RSA 35 1 for the repair improvement and poor placement of sewer infrastructure to name, and, uh, to name the commissioners as agents to expend and to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be placed in this fund. Recommendations required, uh, majority vote required. Um, and I believe there was some discussion of maybe an amendment, so do I have a, a motion for an amendment? So it's on the floor. Uh, so. Yeah, so, any discussion? What firm proposed? Yeah, that it needs to be done at a meeting by the commissioners. It is. Striking without those lines up. Oh, we get a, not get a, please. Are we, Angela's, I think I should have a motion on what that is. I'm sorry, I got, I got, uh, I got ahead of myself. Um, so, Well, somebody read the amendment in the budget committee. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the amendment has been proposed from a member of the budget committee. So, if someone wants to put forward the amendment, and we will enter it into the minutes. Can I have a point of order? Sorry. The commissioners are have presented the warrant. You can recommend or not recommend what's before you, but any amendment will come at their annual meeting. Thank you, Caroline. Well, to that point, though, I mean, I don't know if I can recommend it with that wording in there. So, what do we do with it? We can vote and not recommend. It still has to go Let's still go on. Any other discussion on Article 3? I'm oh, sorry. Article 4. All right. 
way. Uh, we had to have a, did, did we do the motion properly? So who, who, who put the motion forward? Not yet. So who, who, has anybody put a motion to recommend? <coughs> Thank you. And the second is from from Bob. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. I guess it goes back to my point. Say aye. We're approving this amendment. This law we're recommending as written. as it is. Right. And I think we're saying that as written. I mean, I don't. So if that's the wording, then I would say I don't recommend Correct. it. Correct. So an aye vote would recommend it, and a no vote would not recommend it. So all in favor say aye. aye. I'm no. A little confused. No. If Burns spoke to amend this, uh, is this cast in concrete the way it's written here right now? Yes. Um, Yes. 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 Because this has already been published. Yes. It's been brought to a public hearing. So that's okay. How he's proposing it, okay. and it will have to be changed at the end. Oh, I see. If you, if I thought he was revising his proposal. It was his proposal uh, for it. Uh, <coughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Thank you for clarifying. That gives us a dilemma because if we don't approve it, and they're saying we don't agree with the twenty-five thousand. And if we do agree with it, it's because of that one line. Right. I think there'll be enough people at that meeting will know whether we voted for it or we're not approving the whole thing. You understand what I'm saying? Well, the people who are living in the district that go to the meeting will have to make sure that that's related. Really, that it wasn't the concept of it, it was the wording of it and change it better. And that's the clarification. Is the meeting before or after the vote? I'm sorry? Is the meeting before or after the vote? Before or after the vote? Yeah. Yeah, this is oh, a bad, it's, it's held like a book. Okay. So, I have, I have a question about that. So, just a point of clarification again. What I'm understanding is we are going to, if I vote against this, if I vote against this article as it's written, it will then get amended at the meeting. Only if someone does. Only if someone does. But it will say not recommended by the budget committee. That's the issue we want to set for. Can you put any clarification? But we, we one, of, no? one of the members of the budget committee, can make um, an amendment at the meeting. Only if you're a district anyway, member. Yes. Right. right. I'm Only a district can, member. I know, but not anybody can make it. Is what I, I thought you just said. I, anybody from the budget committee. I'm asking a question. Can, can I, as a resident yes. and a member and a member of the budget committee put forth an, an amendment at the meeting. Yes. Okay. That makes it easier for me to vote against this because I can bring it up as an amendment to this article, correct? Or anyone here who is a member of the district and do that too. Doesn't have to be me. It can be any one of us. I think it's just you and me. Just okay. Well other members are But it doesn't have to be a budget committee member that makes that amendment. I'm just clarifying that point. Okay. Any other discussion before we vote? All in favor say aye. All opposed say no. No. The motion does not pass. We will not recommend Article 4. As we are not recommending this warrant article, we are accepting that an amendment can be made on the evening of the annual meeting. That's not yes or no. Yeah, it's yes or no. I think it'll be obvious when someone says, why didn't the budget committee recommend this? And someone said, because the wording was incorrect, but we weren't corrected. That can be dealt with at the, at the meeting. I mean, I think in general the concept is is prudent to do, right? Yeah. To have these funds set aside and stuff, it's just tight of controls. Okay, moving on to Article 5. I move to recommend Article 5. As written. It's the same situation, is mm -hmm. it not? Second. It is. A second from Charlie. 
uh, any discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. No. Okay, let's start this over again. The, this has the same wording issue. Right, so, and I means recommend, and no means do not recommend. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say no. Any abstain? Okay, the motion, the motion does not pass, and the budget committee does not recommend this article as written. And that's the last of the monetary articles. Is there any other business that would like to come before the budget committee? I would like to just make a comment. I think the budget committee has to talk about this. I, think I would like to make a comment that I think the budget committee needs to take back the ownership of this meeting and make the arrangements of this meeting and have it in a hall that doesn't cost us any money. So we should, and I think we could link it with the town one, uh, the public hearing for the budget. So we should try to do that. It's, it's our responsibility. For those of you who made comments during the hearing, if you could um, give Brianna your name so she could put it down. I just want to spell it right. Important. And any other, any for a motion to adjourn? Well, this one, this one Sorry. Is next year's it's a budget committee question. Is it today we should be setting up the schedule, or at least set a date to set up the schedule for next year's plan, or is that after the vote? Usually it's done after the vote. And as the chair, I'll, I'll call that meeting, and then we can elect the chair and move forward. Any other questions? I would like to know of all of us budget committee members, aside from myself and Denise, who are members of the district, if you plan to be present at the annual meeting of the Water Sewer District on March 17th at 6.30. I was not planning. I think it would be great. I think it would be wonderful. Um, but I don't think they can talk. They can't talk. No, I understand that. But I, you know, I, I, you were part of this process. I'm, what, I'm asking if you will be present. Thanks. So, <laughs> final, uh, final thing, just, just thanks to the rest of the budget. I want to thank the budget committee for all the hard work that everybody's put in. And I apologize for some of the the timing and, uh, and the uh, uh, mix-ups on, on dates, but that's uh, it's a volunteer position and that's what you get. <laughs> so, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So, okay. Okay. Then, all in favor? Aye. Uh, is adjourned. <laughs>